Henry Creedlow, has been a pushover all his life trying to fit in. He is a regular mid-level executive working in a magazine company called Bruiser, but he is not happy with his life at all. Henry is married to Jenny, who is no longer in love with him. They live in an incomplete house, messy with construction equipment and draped with plastics all over. Playing the Larry Kay show in the background, Henry continues with his morning routine and gets ready for the day. While listening to a man complain about his life on the radio, Henry grabs the gun and suddenly shoots himself. But it turns out that he is just fantasizing about taking his life. As soon as he returns to his senses, he hears a gunshot on the other side of the radio. Now this is definitely not his imagination. Someone actually took their own life on a live program. On the way to the office, Jimmy Larson, Henry's best friend picks him up in his brand new car and they drive to the train station together. Jimmy works in the finance sector, and apparently, Henry has invested some money with his help. But the returns are much lower than what he expected. While trying to get on the train, Henry is pushed aside by a woman. At that moment, his fantasies run wild and he imagines himself assaulting the woman, which results in her head being smashed by the moving train. When Henry reaches his office, everyone is at the meeting to decide the next face for the magazine's September issue. He is greeted by Rosie, the company's photographer, who also happens to be the wife of his sleazy boss, Milo Style. And it looks like Rosie and Milo are also on bad terms, and are on the verge of separating. Henry chooses a model which might be Milo's choice as per Rosie. But being the jerk he is, Milo ignores Henry's pick and decides to go with a different model. Milo has even put Henry in charge of the barbecue party as well as the upcoming office Halloween party. And before leaving, Milo instructs Henry to bring his wife to the barbecue party that is going to take place in his house. After a tennis game with Jimmy, Henry tells him that the bank rejected his request for the platinum card, citing the insufficiency of his assets. Jimmy convinces him that it can't be Jenny who has tempered with his account and that it might just be a technical error in the system. He then advises Henry not to stress out over it. On the day of the barbecue and pool party, all the people gather in Milo's house. Rosie molds a face mask off Henry's face as it is her hobby to make masks and decorate her garden with them. She asks Henry to paint the featureless mask in a way that people recognize it's his. But he cannot decide on any design to paint on it, so he just leaves it blank. A short while later, Henry witnesses his wife and Milo in an intimate position, but he does not have the guts to confront them since he's not a G. While driving back home, Henry confronts Jenny about the earlier incident. But she tells him that she regrets wasting her six long years with him. Jenny calls him out for being an absolute pushover who does not stand up for himself and adds that she sees no future with him. She then drives him home and tells him to get out of the car immediately. Distraught with this, Henry imagines killing Jenny with an axe when in reality, she is driving away. The next morning, Henry starts his day with the Larry K show as usual. But today, something is different. He is shocked to see a featureless white mask in the mirror staring back at him. When he tries removing it, he cuts himself and bleeds. While he is getting ready for the office, the housemaid Katie arrives. She does not hear Henry speaking and thinks no one is home, so she starts to stuff her bag with silver objects. Henry watches her while she goes through his jacket's pocket. Then, he reveals himself and catches her in action but Katie still insists that she didn't steal anything. And that's when Henry picks up her bag and knocks her down with it. Henry is surprised by what he has done just now. And just then, he hears Jenny's car approaching. He quickly arranges the couch, picks up Katie's bag, and wraps the unconscious Katie in plastic before dragging her to the kitchen. While he does not respond to her calling him, Jenny thinks that Henry must not be in the house. Then, she calls someone and plans their outing for the day. Through their conversation, Henry comes to know that she has spent the previous night with the same person. And as soon as she leaves the house, Henry follows her and arrives at the building of Bruiser. Milo and Jenny start making out at the conference table of the vacant office. But this passionate couple did not expect Rosie to burst in and catch them red-handed. She even manages to capture their moments in a photograph. While Milo chases behind Rosie, Henry appears in front of Jenny who is startled by his faceless white mask. He accuses her that she has taken away the only thing that can't be replaced, his identity, and chases her around the room. Eventually, he not only catches her but also wraps her neck with an extension cord and pushes her out of the window. As Henry is about to leave, he notices someone in the office. His co-worker, Tom, was there to finish off his work, but accidentally overhears the conversation between Henry and Jenny. For a split second, Henry sees a part of his real face surface from the white mask. He then threatens Tom to keep quiet about seeing him there and leaves. Meanwhile, Milo and the passers-by see Jenny hanging in the air. The police are called, and soon enough, Detective McCleary. 
comes to interrogate Milo. Milo admits to having an affair with Jenny but denies killing her. He slips the information about Rosie being in the building earlier, but he is certain that there is no way his wife can kill someone. Immediately after reaching home, Henry loads Katie's body into his car and cleans the blood in the house. Seconds later, he sees the police coming to his front door. They ring the doorbell and try calling his house phone to inform him about his wife's death, but he does not respond to any of them. Afraid of getting caught, Henry prepares the gun and loads it with bullets, ready to end his life if the police break in. Just as he points the gun under his chin, he hears the police outside debating whether Rosie might be the real culprit. And soon after that, the police leave to look for Rosie. Next, Henry hears Jimmy's desperate voice messages to contact him before doing anything about the joint accounts with Jenny. Then, he pulls out the piles of documents and finds out he is more than what Jimmy said about his investments. And in a matter of minutes, Henry finds out that his best friend and his wife have conspired to pocket a share of the money. Henry messes up the whole house, throws his bank cards, and leaves the fired bullets all around the house to make it look like he probably ended himself there. Before he leaves the house, Henry applies whatever foundation he finds in the house and hides his mask under the cosmetics. Then, with a cap and hat, he sets off. Before dumping Katie's body, Henry calls the housemaid agency to inform them that Katie never showed up at his house that day. He then sneaks into Milo's property and calls Rosie to warn her about police suspecting her of Jenny's death. Henry wanted to tell her that it was him who killed Jenny, but before that, Rosie cuts off the phone as Detective McCleary makes his entry. Rosie tells him that she was at the office that day but does not know anything about the murder. And as Detective McCleary leaves, he notices the unusual masks in her garden. On the other hand, a picture of a white masked person from the crime scene has been leaked to the media. Detective McCleary closely looks at the picture and tells his co-workers that the person might be Rosie since she makes such masks at home. Now, the police suspect that Rosie might have killed Henry as well. When they search Henry's home, they find the place all messed up. And on top of that, they also find bullets in the walls. As the news is playing in the background, Henry decorates his white face with red paint. Afterward, he pays a visit to his old friend Jimmy at the indoor tennis club. Henry throws the documents in Jimmy's direction and asks him if it is right to steal from his friends. Jimmy rushes to get help but finds no one in the vicinity. He eventually reaches a vacant locker room, and after kicking him a couple of times, Henry points the gun at him. Finally, Jimmy admits to embezzling his money for two years, but he tells Henry that it was all Jenny's idea. Furthermore, he reveals that the majority of the money was taken away by Jenny, and he promises to pay back every single penny he took from him. He asks Henry to retrieve the briefcase which contains his checkbook from the locker. When Jimmy tells him that he will split the money evenly for both of them, Henry loses control. Jimmy's measly check is not going to make up for the things that Henry has to go through in his life. Jimmy quickly pulls out a gun from the briefcase and shoots at Henry, but his shot misses. Now Henry has no reason to hold back, so he aims for Jimmy's chest and pulls the trigger. Next, Henry dumps Jimmy's body in the water along with a brand new car that was probably bought with his money. After that, Henry adds more red paint to his mask. Later on, Henry sees Tom coming out of the police station and follows him back to his house, where he is spending his time with the model. Henry gets ready to shoot at him, but just then, he hears Tom telling the model that he knows the killer's identity. But when Tom says that he had not told the cops about him, Henry lowers the gun. When Henry goes to visit Rosie the next day, she reveals that she knew about Milo and Jenny's affair for quite some time now. He feels a bit betrayed, but he also feels sorry for Rosie for having to stay with such a jerk. Henry encourages her to break free from Milo and live freely, but it's not that simple for her. Right then, Henry calls the Larry Case show and discloses himself being the killer of not only Jenny but also Katie and Jimmy. He acknowledges that Rosie and Tom have nothing to do with the killing. Furthermore, he hints that something is going to happen later tonight and runs away from the house. Tonight is Halloween night. We see Henry has hired some men to carry out his plan. With everyone in costume, the authorities will have a hard time locating him at the party. Rosie is sure that Henry will appear at the party, so she arrives at the party to see him. And following her, the detective and his partner also reach there. Henry notices this and manages to take Rosie to a safe place without the police noticing it. She tries convincing him to abort his plan and find other ways to take revenge on Milo, but Henry is determined to make this happen. Rosie begs him to leave while he still has a chance, but without listening to her, he returns back to the party. Henry slips away from the police and goes to meet Milo who is busy pleasuring himself with a girl in a washroom. A few men come and grab Milo and Henry tells him that everything is part of the show and that a grand finale awaits him. Surprisingly, 
Milo believes his bluff and goes with the men. In the next scene, the explosion of a confetti-filled dummy hypes the excited crowd. And along with that, Milo is hung in front of the crowd with a harness. Exploding the dummy with a strong laser was Milo's plan, but who would have known that the same laser show will be the cause of his death? Henry takes his sweet time and plays with the laser for a while before finally shooting him in his forehead. But, the crowd still thinks that it's all part of the show. Henry removes his black cape and mask and returns back to the crowd. But someone recognizes him and calls his name. He is flabbergasted and asks that person if she can see his face, since he didn't realize his face is back to normal. Just then, Henry is spotted by Detective McCleary who moves to apprehend him. However, Rosie shows up in front of them in the same white mask that Henry was in. Now, Henry and Rosie both claim to be the killer. And the crowd joins them in their little stunt of figuring out who the killer is. And before they know it, Henry disappears among the crowd. Detective McCleary asks Rosie why she helped him, but she acts confused and tells him she has no idea what he is talking about. A few years later, Henry with long hair is seen working as an office messenger boy. He passes by an angry executive yelling at his subordinates. He also screams at Henry for staring at him. As Henry is about to leave, the angry man calls Henry back and tells him that he is not done yet. And when Henry turns around, his faceless white mask returns back on his face.